Spider-Man No Way Home has made just about all of the money. So naturally, the head honchos at Disney, Marvel, and Sony are probably starting to spend an inordinate amount of time trying to figure out how to best capitalize on all of the Spider-Man hype that's been going around. Well, you guys, let me save you some time. All you gotta do is bring in Miles Morales into the MCU. Do that, and heads will explode from the sheer awesomeness. But if Miles is to be brought into the MCU, hypothetically speaking, what Miles-related stories could be adapted? What comic events could be pulled from for his live-action adventures? Well, I've got a list of a few that I think would be pretty awesome to see. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Okay, so I figured I kind of had to start this video off with Miles Morales' origin, which itself kind of relies on another story arc entirely, that being the death of Spider-Man within the Ultimate Universe. In that story, all of the Webhead's greatest villains came together and attacked him all at once, confronting him in his very own neighborhood. After an all-out brawl in the street, Peter Parker dropped a truck on the Green Goblin, putting an end to hostilities shortly before dying. Now, a little while before this battle, a second radioactive spider, similar to the one that bit Parker and granted him his powers, escaped from Oscorp, and in turn bit Miles Morales, causing him to develop similar abilities. After the death of Peter Parker, Miles, who was upset about not being able to help Parker, decided to step up and take on the mantle of Spider-Man for himself following in Parker's footsteps. Now, I highly doubt that we would see this version of Miles' origin within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as much as I think a proper film adaptation of the death of Spider-Man would totally slap. This is for a couple of reasons. First and foremost being the fact that I kinda doubt Disney, Marvel, or Sony would be cool with the idea of taking out the cash cow that is Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man. Then there is also the fact that we basically already saw this story in Into the Spider-Verse. So to avoid being repetitive, I don't see it being done in live action. That being said, you can't really talk about stories involving Miles without bringing up the death of Spider-Man. If I didn't, someone in the comments probably would. So you know, paying it some lip service here to save you guys all the trouble. Still, you should comment anyways though. Of course, if we were to see the death of Spider-Man and have that launch the hero career of Miles Morales, we could also see them bring Peter Parker back eventually by adapting the revival story arc. In that comic, Miles encountered a resurrected Peter Parker, who had been brought back by Oscorp shenanigans, when the former Spider-Man broke into Miles' apartment, hoping to get his hands on his old web shooters that Miles had previously taken possession of. When Peter refused to tell his Aunt May that he was back, he and Miles got into an all-out fight, leading to Miles getting knocked out, giving Peter the chance to recover his web shooters and make his escape. Of course, as you would expect, it turned out that Peter wasn't the only one who got brought back, as Norman Osborn was resurrected as well, and he started causing trouble, which Miles tried to stop. As you would expect, however, the inexperienced Miles couldn't really do much against this Green Goblin, so Peter had to reveal himself to the world and jump into the conflict as well. In the end, Peter decided that he needed time to try to figure out everything involving his resurrection, and try to live a quiet life for at least a little while, leaving Miles to be the lone Spider-Man for the time being. Now, if they were to do the death slash revival arcs in the MCU, I could see them doing it as a trilogy of sorts. Maybe Death of Spider-Man and the Origins of Miles Morales would be the first movie, the second movie would be Miles coming into his own as a hero, and the third film would be the revival story, setting up two diverging Spider-Man film series, with Miles heading up one and the resurrected Peter the other. Might be just a bit too much Spider-Man at the cinema if I'm being honest with you, but hey, it's certainly one way they could go with it if they were absolutely set on having Miles full-on replace Peter Parker for whatever reason. Of course, they could go the Hawkeye route with Miles, and what I mean by that is have Miles come in and learn under the older Spider-Man how to be a hero. Kinda like what happened in the Spider-Man story arc in the comics. In that story, Miles encounters a Peter Parker from another reality. At this point in time, the Ultimate Universe Peter was still six feet under. And the two webheads found themselves pitted against Mysterio who used his illusions to fight the two Spider-Men before they were able to work together to beat the supervillain. At the end of the story, before leaving to return to his own universe, Peter left Miles with a few parting words, telling the up-and-coming hero that he would do great if he kept things up. Now, if this story were to be done in the MCU, a few things would need to be changed. 
Obviously, Mysterio would have to be swapped out for another villain, which is easy enough. The villain wasn't really the point of the story anyways. Second, I could see them swapping who travels to what universe. This could work out well if Sony decided to use Miles as their main wall crawler in their separate Marvel universe. Then they could have the inexperienced Miles travel to the MCU to learn from Peter Parker, before returning to his own world as a much more confident hero. Could be a decent sort of passing the torch story, while still keeping both Spider-Men around for the future. Now let's take a look at a story that doesn't rely on Peter Parker being around for a change. How about we talk about the Prowler storyline? Now, I think at this point, pretty much everyone knows that Miles' uncle Aaron is actually the supervillain, the Prowler. If you didn't know that because you're a comic fan, you probably know that now because it was a plot point within Into the Spider-Verse. But while the shock of the reveal is pretty much gone, it's still a worthwhile story because it has a lot to do with Miles being able to find his confidence as a hero. On the page, Aaron revealed to his nephew that he knew that he was the new Spider-Man and wanted him to help him deal with some issues he was having, threatening to tell Miles' parents of his double life if he didn't do what he said. So basically, the dude blackmailed his nephew into being his muscle. Real sweet guy. After a while though, Miles realized that enough was enough and confronted his uncle resulting in a fight between the two that led to the death of Prowler when one of his Vibroshock gauntlets was damaged and then shorted out and exploded. Now, if this was going to be done in the MCU, I think it would be best to approach it how they did in the game Spider-Man Miles Morales, with the Prowler actually trying to get Miles to stop being Spider-Man in order to save him from harm, making the fight between the two and the eventual downfall of Prowler a lot more dramatic and gut-wrenching, while also playing more into the caring uncle dynamic that recent versions of the character have gone with. No Way Home left us with a few dangling threads, but the one I want to focus on right now is the introduction of the Venom symbiote to the MCU, by way of the little bit of black goo that got left behind by Eddie Brock during the film's mid credit scene. Now, many people expect that this will lead to the same old story that we've all heard before. Peter Parker will get the symbiote, has the black suit, then he gives it up, Eddie gets it, becomes Venom, on and on and on and on, yada yada yada, you all know it. But what if instead they go a different direction, and the symbiote instead goes to Miles, and we get a sort of adaptation of the Venom War story. In that storyline, Venom attacked Miles' father, Jefferson, who it incorrectly believed was the new Spider-Man. This of course caused Miles to feel responsible, as his being Spider-Man put his dad at risk. Throughout the rest of the story, Venom kept on hounding Miles' family, ultimately leading to one confrontation where Miles was able to subdue the symbiote, but not before his mother was mortally wounded, dying in his arms as she revealed that she knew that Miles was Spider-Man and that she was proud of him. Wouldn't exactly do much to lead to the more common depiction of Venom as an anti-hero, but it would certainly be a different spin on a cinematic Venom storyline that we haven't really seen yet. One Spider-Man storyline that some people have been asking for a cinematic adaptation of over the years was the famous Clone Saga story arc. In that original storyline, Peter Parker and his clone, Ben Riley, had to contend with another evil clone, Kane, who was running around causing all sorts of trouble and making the two good Spider-Men look like monsters. It's a classic comic story to be sure, but not exactly the most well-regarded. But hey, if the fans want it, why not give it to us eventually? Though if we are going to get a Clone Saga movie, why not bring in Miles and do a combination with his own clone-related storyline, that being his Clone Wars event. In that story arc, three clones of Miles started wreaking havoc across New York. The clones were committing crimes in order to try to draw out Miles, because they were angry about the fact that they had shortened lives as clones, while Miles got to live a full one. By combining the two stories, we could have a good excuse to bring the two Spider-Men together, assuming that each hero was allowed to have their own series separate from each other. So it could serve as a team-up film a la The Avengers, only focused on Spider-People. Okay, so admittedly that's not the best argument for this story to be adapted into the MCU, but work with me here, people. I'm trying to make our dreams of clone shenanigans come true, this time with extra cloniness. So, okay, this one isn't necessarily a Miles-specific storyline or anything like that, but I wanted to mention it, so it goes here. We, of course, have the Avengers, 
and there has been a ton of talk the last few years about maybe getting a young Avengers team at some point in the near future. And that is all well and good. But what if we instead got another team of younger superheroes? What if we got the champions? After the second superhuman civil war, a group of younger heroes within the Avengers organization became disillusioned with how the older heroes solved problems, feeling that they were punching down as it were, meeting problems caused by non-superpowered beings, often with lethal or near lethal force. In protest, the members walked away from the Avengers and started their own team. Taking the name The Champions, the team set about trying to rebuild the world's trust in superheroes by dealing with problems in more socially conscious ways, and by prioritizing helping the little guy, as it were. And the team has quite the roster of up-and-coming heroes. Miss Marvel, Amadeus Cho, Ironheart, Nova, Patriot, Vision's daughter Viv, and of course, Miles Morales, just to name a few. It could be a cool variation on the whole idea of a younger super team if Marvel and Disney wanted to subvert expectations and do something different from just the Young Avengers, if that is indeed the direction things are going. And having Miles on the team would be a pretty sweet cherry on top. Of course, doing something with the Young Avengers or Champions, whichever one, could lead to the outlawed plot being adapted into the movies. In that story arc, Kamala Khan was gravely wounded after an accident caused the destruction of a high school. This led to the government passing Kamala's Law, which pretty strictly banned the activities of underage super beings, effectively outlawing young heroes, which honestly is a law that I can get behind because I mean, duh, but anyways. Of course, a bunch of heroes, including Miles, completely ignored the law and continued heroing, which naturally led to conflict as members of the organization Cradle, or Child Hero Reconnaissance and Disruption Law Enforcement, started chasing him down. Now, within the MCU, this might come across as a little bit redundant. In theory, the Sokovia Accords would kind of cover the same basic stuff. That is, of course, assuming that the Sokovia Accords are still in effect after the blip, which is sort of questionable at this point. Still though, just the general idea of having a film focused around Miles going sort of kinda rogue and running from the law could be a ton of fun. We could have had a fugitive hero story after Peter was accused of murder, but they kinda just swept that part of the situation under the rug pretty quickly in No Way Home in order to get to all the multiverse stuff, so no dice there. Look, if we want to do a symbiote-related story involving Miles and we don't want to do Venom War for whatever reason, we could always do something with Venom's not-so-nice child and adapt the Absolute Carnage story arc. Resurrected by a cult that worship Null, the godlike creator of all symbiotes, this dark Carnage, not sure how Carnage could get much more dark, but whatever, proceeded to cut a bloody swath across the Marvel Universe as the symbiote attempted to bond with everyone and everything it came into contact with, forming a massive army of Carnage doppelgangers. Among some of the people taken over was Miles Morales. Now, if we saw a film version of this, it could be presented as an almost pseudo-horror film, with a last man standing sort of climax where our remaining heroes must band together and engage in an all-out brawl with all of the supers that have been infected, Miles included. Not the most Miles-centric story, I know, but come on, you can't tell me a Carnage-focused horror movie wouldn't be amazing to watch. Would probably at least be better than Let There Be Carnage, let's be honest. Of course, I've got to include the storyline that actually led to Miles joining the main Earth-616 continuity, which yes, admittedly isn't a Miles-focused story, but still a big one involving him that I've got to at least mention. I'm of course talking about Secret Wars. When the Ultimate Universe and the main continuity universe collided with one another, the multiverse as we knew it came to an end. In its place, though, was a sort of patchwork version of Earth ruled over by Doctor Doom, known as Battleworld. On Battleworld, the denizens of several different universes lived together and occasionally fought with one another. Eventually, a few of them decided to revolt against the so-called God Emperor Doom, which led to some crazy shenanigans that ended with the reconstruction of the multiverse, restoring things back to the way it was. And yes, that is an extreme oversimplification of the storyline. I've only got a limited amount of time here, people. So, okay, not everything was exactly like it was before. One thing that wound up happening was a few people got shuffled around to different universes, such as Miles, who found himself on Earth-616, 
where he remains to this day. Secret Wars could be a cool way to bring in some of our favorite versions of characters from across the many different film franchises into one contained universe, which would work well if Miles debuted in, say, Sony's Marvel Universe, or if he started out in the MCU and they wanted him to make his way over to the SMU. Either or would work. Hey there everybody, I'm John Algets. I made this video, and I want to know what you think. What stories involving Miles Morales would you like to see in the MCU? Are there any that I didn't talk about? Let me know in the comments below, or shoot me a response over on Twitter, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to CVR for more great videos just like this in the future.